Gemini, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for late July, moving into early August 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business, as always, and start you off with an oracle card here, just so we could dip our toes in the energy and see what's happening for the lovely Gemini Collective. Hope you're all doing fabulous and fantastic, my friends. Let's get it going, my guides. Talk to me. What do we got for these beautiful Geminis here? What energies, messages, insights do we have for late July, moving into early August? And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. At the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot. Just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. But let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Gemini. Late July, what's happening for my good friends here, please? Cards and spirit team, nice and quick. Let's get this card out here. There it is. Okay, so we have a very watery type of energy. That's the best thing I could say because I often see this around water signs. Um, and it is very much mentally active, but in a different way than what you might be used to, Gemini, because everyone knows that Gemini as an air sign, very intellectual, active mindset, but this one is a little more uh, fanciful, if that makes sense. Now, before we fully dive into that, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the July subscriber surprise towards the end, so you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo, into the reading. Let's talk more about this card, which I've been seeing a lot in recent weeks. It's been showing up for a lot of different signs, and on its face, it looks very simple. We see this lady, she's under an umbrella. There's a very colorful, etheric background. There's bubbles. It just feels very dreamy and imaginative to me. That's why it gives me water sign energy vibes here. So again, the mind might be active, but it's like very much daydreamy and imaginative. In this time, you might be having lots of funky dreams or there could be something connected to sleep. Notice this person is dream journaling. So maybe that's something some of you might want to take up, especially if you often have vivid dreams and stuff like that. There could be things connected to the sleep state when this card is in the mix. But whenever I get such a beautiful, imaginative, daydreamy type of energy, I always say that any creative pursuit, any creative endeavor, whether it's different types of art, music, writing, you name it, are highly favored when this card is here, or that could be a great way to express yourself in this time. So we're just going to put it down right there. Again, daydreaming, you, your head might be in the clouds a little bit when this card is here, but we're just going to put it right there. Let's get into tarot. And I always say the first card here, it doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a little footnote. Let's get you three tarot cards in the upright. Then we'll get into that intuitive juiciness. So let's shuffle it up one time here for my beautiful Gemini friends. Guides and spirit team, what's happening? What do we got for Gemini? And while we get this deck shuffled up and ready to go, let's talk about last week's reading. It was titled An Unexpected Change. So just know that that could still take place within the next couple of weeks. The energy could bleed over, that there could be various situations or things changing, whether it's within yourself and emotion or just situations in general. Um, and yeah, that does happen from time to time. So we'll see what energy shows up this week. As you know, energy is very fluid. It's never set in stone. So only take this how it hits for you because we could be seeing your vibe or someone that you're linked to. Let's get it going. Three cards here from a beautiful Gemini, friends. What is happening in Leo season for the Geminis? Three cards, please. There we go. King of Wands, fiery type of energy which could sometimes be a little unpredictable. This could be about where you're focusing your energy. And we'll get into this much deeper momentarily. Let's put that down right there. Let's get a couple more out here. What do we have for Gemini? What do we have? Thank you. Okay, we do have the Five of Pentacles in position number two. Something to watch out for. Notice that that king has its back turned to that Five of Pentacles. Very peculiar, right? Let's get one more out here. Hmm. Okay, nine of wands. Okay, very, very protective, protected type of energy as well. So yeah, Gemini, it feels like we got some things to look at here for sure, especially with that wounded warrior on the back end. So let's go through, I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes, then we'll get into that juicy intuitive stuff. So at first look, first glance, I do have to mention elementally, I always look at the elements in a spread. The first, I mean, on the split ends here, we have a lot of fire energy. Now, I always say that's good because it could be about your internal combustion, your energy, where you're putting it, what you're doing with it. Uh, make sure you're not wasting energy and stuff like that. But at the same time, 
it could be unpredictable, which makes sense because we saw that last week. There's a bit of an unpredictability in the energy here. But this earthiness in the center is kind of like anchoring everything down. One thing I want you to notice, notice like this king has his back turned to the five of pentacles. This person over here has a wall up against this five of pentacles. So it's like this is kind of caught in the middle. So in this time, make sure you're not getting like caught in the middle of other people's stuff. That could be very important for some of you. But let's go through piece by piece and really start to build this out. I don't want to get too intuitive just yet. Position number one, the king of wands himself. So you might be connected to a fire sign. We are currently in a fire sign season right now. It's Leo season. Could be an Aries or even a Sagittarius here when we see that vibe. But that's not always the case. If it's not a person, I always say kings represent control of their respective suit and with what i was just saying about fire it's all about the actions you take the energy you're putting out there what you're focusing on this king it could be literally spirit just telling you like hey well don't waste your energy on this or focus your energy a little more on that it could be spirit just trying to tell you to where to put your efforts when this card is in the mix it's entrepreneurial this is a very outgoing type of energy as well it's a confident uh boss type of vibe so i do like the king of wands but as with all wand energy it could be a little flighty right and i say this as a fire sign myself uh fire energy could be flighty it could be very unpredictable at times so there's something we'll want to watch out for here um, because kings do represent control now as we move forward in the reading notice it does have its back turned to this five of pentacles and i'll tell you why that's like really catching my eye for several reasons but the five of pentacles it's not really the nicest type of energy if i'm being honest with you now every card has positives and challenges the challenges of the five of pentacles it could be solitude it could be someone that feels lonely lonesome it could be feelings of abandonment as well um, feeling like you're left out in the cold if we're talking financial and monetary things make sure you're budgeting make sure you're saving for a rainy day when this card is here because it can indicate some intense energy surrounding finance but if we're talking interpersonal there's like a longing here or there's a lonesomeness it's not the nicest energy it is on a spectrum it doesn't have to be major but the thing i will say about the five of pentacles the positive of it it's not an end result. To me, it's similar to like a rough patch or just you'll get through this. It could be a problem or a situation that you're going through. It doesn't have to be a super long-term thing. To me, it could just be a rough patch if we're looking at it from the most optimistic sense. Now, moving to the very back end, we have the Nine of Wands. The Wounded Warrior has its wall up. Okay. Um, I often say this shows up when people have been through quite a few things and they don't want to go through it again, whether it's a situation or dealings with a person or dealings with a work thing. It's like, okay, I've been down that road. I'm not going down it again. It's a very um, speculative type of energy as well. Like I'm looking at you, I'm watching you. It's skeptical as well. So there could be something that's making you feel a little on guard when the nine of wands is here. It's like, I'm watching out. I'm keeping my guard up very territorial, very protective type of vibe in its most positive sense. In its negative sense, it could represent blockages. It could represent rejections. So that's the thing that I'm finding very interesting here is there could be a situation, a problem, or something that you're either just trying to put out of your mind, put out of your thoughts. There could be a stone cold rejection as well because notice the king with the back turned the wall up over here it's like all right well where am i going to go what am i going to do okay so whether you're rejecting a feeling or it could even be just a situation in general i'm already picking up those undertones of either ignoring blocking or rejecting so i want to dive deeper on all of it let's jump in and clarify all right <clears throat> let's get a good shuffle here for my gemini's please and yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot, because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that King of Wands. And if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Gemini, you can drop it right in the comments. I don't mind at all. Okay, King of Wands time. What's happening? Why is that King of Wands in the mix? Thank you. Three of Cups. Okay, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not looking at that. We have the Three of Cups in the upright underneath the King of Wands. Okay, and, and you know what? I could vibe with this type of energy here in the front where it's like, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, or I'm only going to focus on the positives here. Notice, again, I just can't get over how that King has its back turned 
to this imagery and i don't always look at like the the way it flows in that way but to me it's just jumping out at the page now the three of cups is almost the exact opposite of this five of pentacles these people are celebrating they're having a damn good time they're having a ball so this could be advice for some of you for a portion of you maybe spirits just saying like hey focus on the good things focus on the good times see the silver lining in a situation it's very important to stay optimistic but at the same time this could also be somebody distracting themselves where it's like okay i know i have a problem i know i have an issue that i need to address i'll do it later it's like giving me that type of energy too. So there might be somebody that's postponing something or kicking the can down the road where it's like, okay, yeah, uh, th that has to be addressed, but not yet, not now. Um, again, we'll talk about it more during the recap. It could just be advice from spirit telling you like, hey, don't dwell on the bad, try to focus on the good. That could be a really good thing, but I can't let go of this energy of someone like ignoring something or saying, I'll deal with this another time. Let's keep moving forward. Let's see what that Five of Pentacles has to say. And I really want to get over to that Nine of Wands, too. This is a very different energy than I've seen for the rest of the Zodiac this week, Gemini. At least for the ones I've already filmed. But let's see what's up with that Five of Pentacles. Why is that Five of Pentacles here? Thank you. Sun in reverse. Okay, there's no confusion about this. And that's the one positive I could pull. For some of you, yeah, there could be a problem. Uh, I don't want to say it's like super serious, but to me, it it does feel like, all right, there's clarity here. I understand it. It's it's not the end of the world type of energy as well. But when I see the sun in reverse underneath the five of pentacles, it's like, all right, well, I'm very aware. I know what, what I'm dealing with. I know how to fix it. But it's not getting fixed right now for whatever reason or it's not being addressed right now for whatever reason so i'm getting possible two energies of like rejection for the time being at the very least where it's like i'm, I'm just not going to pay attention to it yeah i know yeah i know it's there yeah all the things i was already saying now the sun leo energy in the upright one of the most positive cards in the deck even in reverse it's pretty positive but to me this is a card of revelation this is a card of realization it's a card of truth and honesty and seeing all the facts so when i see it in reverse underneath the five of pentacles it's like yeah well i know it's there but i'm not going to feed any energy into it okay so whether this is your energy or somebody else's it's like they're very cognizant of this problem very cognizant of this situation, whatever it is in the center, but it's just not feeding into it for whatever reason. So whether that's something you need to do or that's how someone's acting, and it could be frustrating depending on what side of the fence you're on here. Let's keep moving over to the Nine of Wands, see what that's about. I mean, part of it could be somebody trying to like make sure something doesn't get worse too, where it's like, all right, let's just see what the Nine of Wands has to say, then we'll do our recap. So why is that nine here? Please, quick, super, super quick. Okay, so we have the seven of wands in the upright underneath this nine of wands, very protective type of energy. And that is, again, the vibe I'm picking up is the energy of a rejection here, okay? So whether it's a behavior or situation you're rejecting, it could also be, again, very, very, very protective. So just know in this time, whether you feel like you're protected if maybe spirits telling you like hey gemini put those walls up for whatever reason stay insulated um but again it's like this energy in the center is like hanging by itself it's there this situation or whatever it might be it's there and it needs to be addressed but for whatever reason this one's ignoring it and this one it's not even paying any mind okay so the seven of wands is usually a card of someone who's, who's like yeah it's me against the world it's a card of determination, someone who's going to fight if they need to. So again, like when I see the seven of wands with the nine of wands, this is someone that's extremely, extremely protective and on guard. Okay, so whether that's an energy you're carrying or somebody else's, it's like I'm watching everything hyper sensitive to energies. And it's someone who's just on guard about something. But I can't let go of this energy I've been picking up. Now, does this mean that you're going to be rejected in this time? No, it doesn't have to be the case. It could, again, just be a behavior or a situation where it's like, well, for now, I'm rejecting this. I can address this later on. That's the vibe. That's the big vibe. And with this energy I'm picking up here on the back end with the Seven of Wands, I can see that happening. I can see whatever this is getting addressed for sure. But this energy on the other end, it's just like 
completely ignoring. This one is like, yeah, I'll, I'll touch on it when I want to, or like I'll figure it out or I'll put energy into it when I want to. Again, lots of fire here. So let's go through and do a quick recap, Gemini. Very, very peculiar reading this week. But if you kindly look in the box before we get into the shadow, position number one, and again, I've, I've gone through it several times, the directions of the cards and how they feel kind of funky to me. We have the King of Wands with the Three of Cups in the upright. This could be advice from Spirit telling you to focus on the positive, keep your mind right, be optimistic about things, don't focus on the Five of Pentacles. You're like, you got to keep your mind right. But for another portion of you, there could be something you're just not addressing at the moment where it's like, I know it's there. I know I got to do it, but I could wait. Um, or that's somebody ignoring something. Moving to the center, we see this situation. There's clarity around it, or at least there will be. We have the Five of Pentacles with the sun in reverse. And yeah, again, I don't feel like there's tons and tons of mystery and secrecy here. It's like, yeah, well, I know about it. I know what it is. I know how to deal with it. Just don't want to do it right now. Okay, or I don't want to help right now. And I, another big thing, don't get pulled into other people's stuff. Because remember, I feel like this is a no man's land in the center because we have these two opposing energies on the opposite sides. Moving to the back end, we have the nine of wands with the seven of wands in the upright. Yeah, someone who has their guard up, very protective type of energy, willing to fight if they have to. Um, and it's like, I'm watching everything. I got my eyes out here. I'm very skeptical. But again, there's a rejection where it's like, I got my wall up, but if you push too close, I'm going to push back. It's like giving me that vibe too. So in this time, there could be various things that you yourself might be rejecting, whether it's people, behaviors, situations, you name it. Please take a screenshot of that. Let's see what's in the shadows. Just be weary about getting pulled into other people's stuff. You don't want to get pulled into no man's land here. So let's shuffle it up one time. What do we have in the shadows for Gemini? Guides and spirit team, what's happening? And yeah, I always like to pull one shadow card at the very end just to see whether it's something within you or something you don't quite see. Shadow cards don't always have to be a challenge. They could be a good thing too. So let's get you one. And if you've made it to this point in the reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it in the comments below. It's a beautiful way to support the channel and I have much love for all my channel members. Okay, shadow time. Why is it here? What's here? What's beneath the surface? Thank you. Okay, page of cups again, and I do feel like it links into everything we have here in the center. Now, the page of cups is a big card of communication and emotion, like somebody might feel like there's some things that have been left unsaid, that there's some things they just need to say or get off their chest. That could be a big thing with the page of cups in the shadows. But again, this could also represent a conversation that you have looming. If there is something that you need to have addressed, eventually it's going to happen one way or another. You can't like reject it or ignore it forever. But again, the Page of Cups could be nice. I mean, if you're dealing with a water sign, then it might be a little bit rough. But the big thing I see about the page is, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you how I feel about it. So it is about crystal clear communication. So again, whether there's something you feel like it's been left unsaid or you need to let it out in one form or another, it's showing up here. So Gemini... That's what I have for you this week, my friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give the details of the July subscriber surprise. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, you can check out my digital calendar at my website, mastermetaphysics.com. The link is down below. But for the July subscriber surprise, I'm giving away two copies of another one of my favorite decks, The Wizard's Tarot. Absolutely beautiful and works great. So if you'd like to get your name in for this, it's two simple things. As always, my friends, first, you must be subscribed. And second, since I have the travel bug lately, let me know down in the comments what is the most beautiful place you visited in person and you'll be entered to win and at the end of the month the winners will be announced in my community tab as always my friends much love and i'll see you soon